In this video, we're going to introduce the idea of the rate law, which is a mathematical relationship between the rate of a reaction and the concentration of the reactants. So we talked in the last lesson about how concentrations can affect the rate in different ways based on the order of the reaction with respect to each reactant. So that is going to come into play in our rate law here. Um, and our rate law also includes something that's known as the rate constant. which is a lowercase k, um, which is just a proportionality constant that makes the uh, product of your concentrations with their appropriate orders um, actually equal to your rate. So the rate constant um, varies by reaction and also varies with temperature. So it is constant at constant temperature, but if the temperature changes, the value of K changes as well. Um, so the general form of a rate law, what these things look like, is that the rate of our chemical reaction, and there is no abbreviation for rate, you have to write out the word rate um, in a rate law, is equal to the rate constant times the concentrations of your reactants raised to some exponents. So our little k here is what we just talked about is just a constant that's going to be unique to each of our reactants. Our a and b here in square brackets are our reactant concentrations. And then the exponents are our reaction orders. So x here would be the order with respect to a, since it's the exponent on a. And y would be the order with respect to b. So if you're asked to write a rate law, it should look almost exactly like this. Word rate equals letter K times. The only thing that's going to change is what goes in these brackets and what these exponents are. Um, so to write a rate law, essentially all you need to know is what are your reactants. So if you have a balanced reaction, you know that. Um, and what is the order with respect to each reactant, which we talked about how to determine in the last video based on some data. So if you have the right data, you can write a rate law pretty easily. Um, and these exponents just become 0, 1, or 2 for 0, 1st, or 2nd order with respect to each reactant. Um, and if it's 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, so that actually gets left out of our rate law since it's not playing a role mathematically in the rate. Um, so let's look at an example. So I've got some data. Move this up a bit. Not that much. There we go. Um, so if we want to write the rate law for a hypothetical reaction with reactants A, B, and C based on the following data, we're going to need to determine the order with respect to A, the order with respect to B, the order with respect to C. So ultimately what we're looking to do here is to write our rate law, but it's going to fit that same form. So rate is equal to K times A raised to some exponent we don't know yet times the concentration of B 
raised to some exponent we don't know yet times the concentration of C raised to some exponent that we don't know yet. So all we're really looking to fill in here is the exponents at this point. So I'm gonna have you pause here and try to determine the reaction uh, orders on your own with respect to A, B, and C. The one thing you need to watch out for in this example is um, that you have data for multiple different reactants and you want to make sure that only one thing is changing at a time. So you don't want to have, don't want to be comparing data from two different trials where you have multiple concentrations changing because you have multiple different things that are going to be affecting your rate. So for instance, if we wanted to determine the reaction order with respect to A, we want to look for two uh, rows in our table here where the concentration of A changes, but the concentration of everything else stays the same. So we can see that this concentration is different. We could in theory compare it to any of these other ones. If I compare our fourth row to my first row, B is staying the same as 0.1 in both cases, but C is also changing. So we would have effects due to both A and C and we wouldn't necessarily know which is which. But if we compare say rows three and four, we can see that my concentration of A is quadrupling, B is staying the same, C is staying the same. So any effect on the rate has to be due to the change in A because nothing else has changed. So we wanna make sure only one variable is changing at a time. So pause here for a moment and try to figure out the reaction order with respect to A, B, and C, and then we'll fill those into the rate law in a moment. So to determine our orders, we want to compare what happens to the concentration and what happens to the rate for each of these different substances for A, B, and C. So for A, we said that we were gonna compare uh, trials three and four here, since we have our concentration changing and uh, for A and not changing for B or C. And we see that my rate is not changing at all. It's staying the same. So we can think of this as being multiplied by one, it's not changing anything, which is four to the zero power. So the orders are really the exponents in the rate law that no matter what you multiply the concentration by, anything to the zero power equals one, meaning that it's not gonna change your rate. So based on that, we can see that this reaction is zero order with respect to A, so that means that this exponent is a zero. To check out what's happening with B, again, we need two trials where our concentration of B is changing, but everything else stays the same. So if we look at that, um, we see that this second trial is different from the other one, so it's definitely gonna involve this one. And the only place where everything else remains constant is from trials uh, between trials one and two. So in these trials, A is 0.1 both times, C is 0.1 both times. Um, whereas in the other trials, we would either have, if we compared these two, C is changing. If we compared these two, A is also changing and we'd have multiple variables going on. So in this case, our concentration is being multiplied by two. If we take a look at our rate, that is also being multiplied by two aka times two to the first power. Um, and that is where that first order is coming in here. It's really the exponent. Um, last but not least, we need to determine the effect of C, uh, the concentration of C on the rate. If we look at these guys, sorry. So this was first order in B, which means this exponent is gonna be a one. And then for C, the two trials that we want to compare are one and three. Our concentration of C is being multiplied by three here, while A and B are remaining constant between those two trials. And our rate is being multiplied by nine 
or 3 squared. So that exponent of 2 is why we get the times 9 effect when our concentration is multiplied by 3. So this is second order in C, which means that that exponent for C is going to be a 2. So the rate law as I have it written right now is OK. The better way to write it is to not include any zero order things. Since they're not having an effect, um, they don't play a role on the rate. It is better to exclude them. Um, it's not wrong to have it there. It's just not necessary. So this is the preferred way to write this rate law. We also don't need to include an exponent of one explicitly since it's implied. Um, and that would be kind of the perfect rate law for this reaction.